Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. It's Thursday, July 15th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. Missouri Supreme Court judges will soon decide whether the state must provide access to Medicaid for roughly 275,000 people, including Kansas City resident Nina Canaleo, who has multiple sclerosis and is trying to make ends meet. I'm not ready to not be walking yet, you know? I have to work, and I have to walk to, to, to take care of my kid and to live. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum will report on the critical legal fight in just a few minutes. There has been a flurry of bill signings by Missouri Governor Mike Parson. One involves several police reforms, including restrictions on how and when police can use chokeholds. Luke Martin reports. The restraint tactic would only be allowed if an officer is defending themselves or others from death or serious physical injury. Republican State Senator Tony Lutkemeyer, who sponsored the bill, says he was encouraged by its bipartisan appeal. It combined both pure, I guess, pro-police provisions in it, but also had some police reforms that I think were common sense and were actually supported by all of the law enforcement. Among other things, the law eliminates a requirement that Kansas City police live within city limits and gives prosecutors the ability to challenge wrongful convictions in the court that handed them down. That last provision will open a new avenue toward freedom for inmates like Lamar Johnson, who St. Louis prosecutors say has been wrongfully imprisoned for decades. I'm Luke Martin. Governor Parson has also signed a measure that could give students access to private school scholarships as soon as next year through a tax credit program. Another bill changes some of the state's HIV laws for the first time in 20 years. It has been a felony in Missouri to recklessly expose another person to HIV. Under the new law, prosecutors must prove someone knowingly exposed a person to the virus to get a felony conviction. Mallory Rush leads Empower Missouri, an advocacy group that lobbied for the bill's passage. We still feel like it's a really strong step in the right direction to make sure that the laws are medically accurate and are charging people at an appropriate level. The updated law will take effect in August. St. Louis and St. Louis County officials are increasing efforts to convince people to get vaccinated as the Delta variant of COVID-19 rages in some areas of Missouri. County Executive Sam Page has announced the Sleeves Up STL initiative, which seeks to enlist beauty salons and barber shops in the northern part of the county to encourage customers to get their shots. The Board of Aldermen has endorsed a plan to entice people to get vaccinated. It's part of a nearly $170 million package that could receive final approval this week. St. Louis Public Radio's Corinne Ruff reports. Less than 35 percent of people in St. Louis are fully vaccinated. That's about 10 percent lower than in St. Louis and St. Charles counties. Alderwoman Shamim Clark Hubbard of the 26th Ward sponsored an amendment that would earmark more than a million dollars for prepaid debit cards to hand out as vaccine incentives. Each would be worth up to $100. It's just now when you come, you can also get this incentive to bring some more people back in. Because, you know, we had big, big, big ones and then it slowed all the way down. And now we're dealing with the Delta variant. The board is expected to vote on a final version of the pandemic aid bill on Friday before the summer recess. I'm Corinne Ruff, St. Louis Public Radio. Funding for that bill is the first wave of federal pandemic relief money from the American Rescue Plan Act. Now, the race to get more people vaccinated in the St. Louis area comes as officials worry about the spread of the Delta variant. Healthcare leaders in Springfield are asking the state to help as the variant pushes hospitals there to their limits. Michelle Skaliski reports. There were 231 patients at the city's hospitals, Cox Health and Mercy Springfield, on Wednesday, and 103 were in critical care, many on ventilators. The Springfield Green County Health Department, in collaboration with health care partners, are requesting funding for an alternative care site to provide transitional care to COVID patients who are stable enough to be released from the hospital. Brent Hubbard, president of Mercy Hospital Springfield Communities, says his co-workers are tired. We have staff that are working seven, eight shifts in a row and 12-hour shifts at a time. 
and that is taxing. Steve Edwards, president and CEO of Cox Health, said the situation is similar at his health care system. I'm Michelle Skaliski. Missouri Supreme Court judges are weighing whether to preserve or scrap a 2020 ballot item expanding Medicaid. It's a case that could decide whether a lengthy debate on bolstering the health care program is resolved or remains in flux. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum has more on the arguments in the high-stakes legal battle. It may seem cliche to compare court arguments to a boxing match, but Tuesday's Missouri Supreme Court arguments had all the trappings of a championship fight, including highly skilled people duking it out in rhetorical fashion and a capacity crowd watching the proceedings. And it's no secret why the case at hand is receiving so much attention. The outcome will determine whether a 2020 ballot initiative expanding Medicaid can actually be implemented or effectively invalidated because the legislature refused to specifically fund it. Chuck Hatfield, who represents three women seeking access to the program, says the legislature made no distinctions about which people should get Medicaid coverage. And since the Constitution specifically details who is eligible, he says his clients should get to sign up. We ask this court to remind the executive branch that the people, by a vote of consti- uh, to amend their Constitution, have required the executive branch to enroll our clients in the MoHealthNet program. John Sauer of the Missouri Attorney General's office dismissed Hatfield's contention that the legislature wasn't abundantly clear in their decision making. After all, lawmakers voted down a number of attempts to add money into the budget to accommodate expansion. Their intent was not to fund the expansion population, but only to fund the pre-expansion population, just as they had done in 2019 and 2018 and 2020 and so forth. The court could go in a number of different directions. Judges could rule that the state has to let Hatfield's clients sign up for Medicaid, which would mean roughly 275,000 people would gain access to the program. They could also side with the state and say expansion is contingent on specific legislative action, or they could sustain a lower court decision stating the amendment is unconstitutional because it appropriated money without a specific funding source. What's not in doubt is the decision over expansion could have massive implications for the state's politics and for people who could qualify for Medicaid, like Kansas City resident Nina Canaleo. She has multiple sclerosis, and Medicaid could help pay for crucial medication. I'm not ready to not be walking yet, you know? I have to work, and I have to just walk to, to, to take care of my kid and to live. While expansion proponents are by and large Democrats, The effort to bolster Medicaid includes a slew of business groups that worry that tight access to the program is hurting the state's health care system. That's why Jason Hall of Greater St. Louis, Inc. joined with other regional business organizations to file a brief with the court in favor of expansion. So we can't hold back those benefits now, uh, particularly in the situation we found ourselves in uh, with COVID. It is important to make sure that health care is accessible and we bring home the economic benefits of expansion to the economy of this state. Republican lawmakers, including House Majority Leader Dean Plocker, say that expansion will be a long-term financial drag on the state. And I think as a whole, we have to be good fiscal stewards of how we're doing that. Uh, my colleagues in the House, uh, and, and for that matter, I guess the Senate, were very good fiscal stewards in saying, hey, listen, um, we can't afford all of this. Plocker doesn't buy the argument that Missouri should pursue expansion because it would bring in more than $1 billion in federal coronavirus relief, which could conceivably pay for the state portion of the program. You're then promising to spend the money in perpetuity when you only have a finite amount of money coming in. And then we're saying we have to figure out where that money comes from. Joel Ferber is with Legal Services of Eastern Missouri and is one of the attorneys for the plaintiffs. He notes that the Supreme Court could transform the state's mentality toward providing health care coverage, especially since currently Medicaid primarily serves children, disabled people, and individuals who have basically no income. It's about 21, 22% of the poverty level. It's a, you know, for a family of 
three, it's about 300 bucks a month. I mean, we are uh, have the lowest, among the lowest eligibility in the entire country, which is one of the reasons it's an issue. Whether Medicaid expands to more of the working poor is clearly the biggest consequence of the pending Supreme Court decision. The seven judges are expected to decide the case fairly quickly. I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. This has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com.